Welcome to Discovering. Tonight we learn where and how to set traps under the ice for beavers. About a foot below the ice works the best. Their entrance going into the, to the lodge. Where they go in, the ice is very thin. And if you enjoy hiking, I have a volunteer opportunity for you. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. This winter, I learned a lot about something I knew little about, beaver trapping. Specifically, beaver trapping under the ice. Before copper was king and before iron ore was discovered, before the tall white pines were chopped down to build cities, the Great Lakes were centers of the fur trade and beaver put the UP on the map. The fur trade began in the Gulf of the St. Lawrence River in the early 1620s. French fishermen began trading European goods for beaver meat and furs with the native people. It was discovered that the soft inner fur of the North American beaver made for the best felt for hats and fur for garments, and a huge demand for beaver pelts in Europe began the fur trade that brought the first French voyagers west into the interior of the continent and to the Upper Peninsula. Over the next century, trading posts were established in Sault Ste. Marie, the Straits of Mackinac, Grand Island, Launce, and Ontonagon. By the 18th century, there were few fur-bearing animals left in the UP, and traders went further south and west of the Great Lakes. By the 1860s, silk had replaced beaver felt in the European hat market, and the great North American fur trade came to an end after 200 years. In those days, there were no thoughts of conservation and unregulated commercial harvest brought the beaver to near extinction. Over the next 100 years, the beaver population recovered and today trappers still harvest these giant rodents for their meat and pelts. Now with regulated fur markets and harvest seasons. One of those trappers is James Jillick. And today, we're setting traps in frozen lakes and beaver ponds. That's why I fell in. I was, I was walking towards the hut and I got right there and I, I hit the spud. Everything gave out underneath me. And I just took my bar and then I just kind of pulled myself up and out. The water was only about waist deep. It scares you at first. You don't know if you're going up to your neck or... I got two traps on either side of the feed piles there. I figure there's got to be six, eight beaver in here. If no one trapped it, there might be none for all I know. <laughs> oh, I got nothing. Nothing in that one either. There's a bunch of wolf tracks all up on, on that hut. Maybe they got the beavers. But they they might have. I'm gonna take a dozen traps with me. And I gotta uh, put some new bait on these. 
Beavers are herbivores. They eat the leaves, inner bark, and twigs of deciduous trees and shrubs, and some aquatic plants and grasses. Their large orange teeth continuously grow to help them eat and cut down trees for building. So, for bait on the traps, we're using their favorite food. Their favorite bark is uh, popple. I've seen them chew down uh, oak, maples, uh, tag elder, if that's the only food supply they have. Cut a piece off, shave a little bit off the ends. The beaver will see that and then they'll bite, uh, grab onto it. And just before I put it in the water, I'll, I'll scratch up the bark a little bit. And there's one ready for uh, be set. And like I said, I'll scratch it up a little bit and the beaver will see it and they'll just grab onto it and get caught. These are uh, 330 conibears. Imagine they last a lifetime, or no? Yes, some of these traps are older than I am. A lot of my traps I set to springs before I head out in the woods. I do have trap setters. But I find it's quicker just to use the tailgate or a stump out in the woods. Now I put a new trigger on this. I want to make sure this, this well, is going to work. Sometimes you put a new trigger on and it's too sensitive. Oh, it's gonna work. And yes, I've got I've caught myself in these. I'm up to 48 beavers so far. My goal is to try to catch as many as I can. <laughs> chewing on a birch it goes to show you they'll eat anything there's a beaver hut right to your left they got a feed pile there but I'm gonna set the traps at an old hut away from the, that way I get a uh, bigger beaver instead of getting the little ones why would the bigger beaver be at the the, the little ones stay at the main hut. The bigger ones will go to and use old huts or bank dens and they stay away from the little ones. Unless they're eating, they'll join the little ones in a main hut to eat sometimes. These huts or lodges are the beaver's primary home used for eating, sleeping, and raising young. Beavers build their lodges with branches and logs and plaster them with mud. One or more underwater openings lead to tunnels that all meet in a middle chamber. There'll be up to 10 beaver in a colony, ranging from the, the mating pair adults to the two-year-olds to the one-year-olds and then the kids. And once they're like two years old, they, they get kicked out of the colony, then they move on. Let's see, I'll put one here and I think I'm gonna put one about 10 feet away. James is setting the baited traps near the old lodge where the water is deep enough to suspend them. The trap is not set. I just put the, so I take the ax and I'll scarf that up a little bit on either side of that stick. So it will hit that trigger and set the trap off. It catches them right around the neck and it doesn't take long for the trap to dispatch the animal. I always got a piece of wire to wire up to safety. Sometimes I've had them where I forgot to wire them up and the trap will go off, but the trap doesn't catch the beaver, and the beaver gets away, then he gets then he becomes trap shy. And once they get their nose smacked once or twice, they'll stay away from the sets or from that area. 
And now I'm gonna loop my chain through. Yeah, just below the, about a foot below the ice works the best. Beaver trapping is a lot of work for a small reward and it requires skill and patience. So you have to really enjoy this to spend the amount of time and energy it takes. It's therapy. How's it? I just unwind and come out and go beaver trapping. It's relaxing, a lot of work. Makes me happy, that's all that matters. And getting a workout. <laughs> <sighs> Old lodge, uh, bigger beavers still use it. So there, there's a run right here. Their entrance going into the to the lodge, and where they go in, the ice is very thin. It's thick here, but when you it goes straight straight down. James is setting an unbaited trap in front of the lodge entrance. This one, he's anchoring to the pond bottom with a trap stand. Instead of trying to use a stick to get the trap down in there, I'll put the trap on here. It'll stabilize the trap and keep it, the trap in one place for me. And that trap goes down. You could put the trap on upside down or right side up like I have it here. And I got these cables on here to help secure it. In case you catch a beaver, it doesn't swim, uh, swim away from your hole and you lose your trap and your stand. You can see the top of the stand. The water's probably three feet deep. Attach my cable to that. And it's set for tomorrow. Be checked. Put this one in to help guide the beaver through the trap. These are blocking off sticks. Beavers also dig out bank dens for shelter. What I do is I look, I'm looking for a bank den. I'm checking for runs. There's one right there. There's one right there. The ice is paper thin. Where we're walking now is probably six inches thick. And that den there, they're using it so much. It's half inch, yeah. half inch or even thinner. Sometimes it'll be open water. I'll best I'm put my trap. And they, they got that den going right underneath that dead tree. I use my foot and I can feel their, their tunnel going up into the bank. And it goes right underneath this dead tree. And it's all caved out, concave and hard, hard packed. <sighs> I'll put my trap on that one. Now I'm taking this stick and I'm putting it between the jaws of the trap to stabilize it. When they swim through, they won't push the trap out of the way. And then I'll secure it right to the tree here. That's why I like to use cables. And hopefully tomorrow this cable will be tight going that way with, with a beaver in it. I think there's three more bank dens on this shore here. Then we'll put a couple baited traps by that one and maybe down by that one too. Successful trapping means knowing their habitat and how they move around their environment. This large pond was purposely engineered by beavers. Beavers are considered keystone species in that their tree cutting, dam building activities create entire wetland ecosystems used by a variety of other species. The reason beavers build dams is to increase water depth, 
creating a pond around their lodge lets beavers construct underwater entrances to their homes, which protects them from wolves and other predators. And for easy underwater travel around their pond community, especially when the surface of the pond freezes. Beavers also store food under the ice in the winter. And feed piles like these are a sign that it's an active beaver lodge. There's so much activity there that there's no ice whatsoever on that, by that feed pile. Mm -hmm. there, must, there must be an entrance going there. They'll put their entrances right underneath those feed piles. I appeal. That'll be about a foot and a half underneath the ice. There it is. Whether they find that baited trap or not, it's up to them. <laughs> I just put it in a location I hope they find it. So I got two right, right next to the feed piles. So I hope, hopefully they find the, that tasty morsel and grab it. <laughs> If not, it'll be empty. <laughs> we'll know tomorrow. We'll know tomorrow. That's what, just like Christmas morning, you don't know what you get till you get there. When you get that present, you open it up, you don't know what you have. As we're banging around on the top of the ice and setting traps, I can't help but wonder, where are the beavers right now? Are they inside the lodge? And do they know what is going on outside their house? I've seen it on YouTube where a guy was setting up on a house like this. He had a trap on the other side and he was chopping a hole on this side. He got a beaver on the other side. It was pretty neat. It took many hours and a ton of work to set all these traps. Watch next week to see how we did and what he does with them. I think we got one. Switching gears, the North Country Trail, which runs 550 miles across the entire UP, as well as the Lower Peninsula and seven other states from Vermont to North Dakota, has recently been recognized with national park status. There's a national trail system, and the North Country Trail is one of those. The original ones were like the Appalachian Trail and then Pacific Crest Trail, but there are 11 major trails in the National Park Service system. And the difference between being having unit status and not it really means that the trail can get more funding. It's treated more like a major national park instead of just a sideline. So we'll see what happens. Again, it was just granted oh, a few months ago, and we'll see how much difference that makes to our funding and what, ha what happens on the trail. The new unit designation doesn't change how the trail is maintained, which is still done by volunteers like Mark. For example, I have a segment called Segment 13 and, and 14, and basically try to get out on it one, several times a year to make sure everything's passable and that nobody's going to get lost. Everybody can find their way through and just make it a pleasant hiking experience. Some segments don't have adopters, uh, so it falls on the other people to try to get in and do it. And so we could use some volunteers for adopting a segment. 
If you'd like to volunteer or adopt a segment of the trail, go to northcountrytrail.org to find your local chapter contact info. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.